Hello and welcome back to the channel. This will be episode two in our Pi game tutorial series. Um, and we will be picking up directly where we left off with the previous video. Um, so the code looks just like this and uh, the screen looks like this. So if you didn't check that one out, um, we will be starting from a 600 by 600 screen with a blue background and a green ball we drew on it. Um, and actually I was, uh, gonna change this back to just being a variable green so if you didn't check that one out be sure to go and check that out before uh, jumping in but uh, what we're gonna work on today is adding motion to the ball so we're gonna we're gonna kind of have this ball bounce um, off the extremities and be constantly moving because ultimately the goal will be once we create a player to be dodging the ball at all times so we're gonna work a little bit on the motion today, but first one thing um, I wanna change real quick. You see here it just says Pi Game window. Um, something we can add real quick is just a uh, Pi Game dot display dot set caption. And uh, this is where we can actually define a title for our window. So I'll go ahead and call it Ball Bouncer. This is all you need right here to create a title. And you see up top, um, it updates the title. You can also update the icon um, if you want to bring in a little PNG that describes your game. Um, this is a pretty simple game, so I'm not gonna worry about that too much for now. But let's go ahead and get into it. Um, so one thing, all three of these draws and display updates, we actually don't want those inside of the for loop handling events. We want these to be drawing at all times. And when we add the ball motion, that'll kind of become clear why. So one thing we're gonna add into the game now is a clock. Um, we're gonna create a timer and we're gonna use Pi Games built in pygame.time.clock function. And um, we are going to, while in the running loop, we are gonna use timer.tick. And what we're doing here is we're creating a universal frame rate and I'll go ahead and say we want to run at a frame rate and that'll be a variable we need to go and define up here now. Um, so what we did there, different, the, when you just have a while loop in Python, um, the code is going to update as fast as it possibly can unless you put in a timer um, that's going to slow it down to a specified number of updates per second. So we use a frame rate of 60, and what we really said here is we want this to run at 60 clicks per second. Um, and that becomes useful when you start having motion and character interactions and controls and things, because you can very quickly load up an old machine and it'll run much slower than it would on a new program. That can be unfair inside of a game and it just looks kind of bad. So um, that's, uh, that's why the timer, that's why the frame rate, and then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new function and we're gonna call it update ball position. Okay, and we're gonna run that every second. And what that's gonna be is our constantly in motion ball. So we called it update ball position. And we don't have to pass any variables in if we define everything as a global object inside of here. So to do that, we need to call out um, we need to call out some variables uh, that I believe um, will actually want to change our circle from being drawn at 300, 300 to a couple variables I'll call circle X and circle Y. And this way we can update the position of the ball based on these variables. Um, so we'll need to come up into our game variables section and say 300 and 300 and we're defining the initial starting point. And then we're also going to do something that I'm going to call circle X direction. And um, I'll just call that a one to start off and a circle y direction and I will call that a one to start as well and you're gonna see what all four of these variables are for inside of our function here so if we come down what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all four of these that we just made and we are gonna define them as global so we can mess with them inside of a function but then we can call those variables outside of the function and still be referencing them 
So this series is absolutely not uh, like a beginner intro to Python in general, it's an intro to Pygame. So if you're unfamiliar with things like globals and creating functions and calling variables, I suggest you start with a more basic tutorial series on just basics of Python. This is more specific to Pygame and assumes you kind of know what a lot of these things are. Um, there's one of those playlists on this channel for intro to Python, I can go ahead and link that. Um, below or you can check it out on the, the channel otherwise what we're doing so we're calling in the circle x circle y and both directions so that we can start um, writing some code checking to see uh, how we should move the ball so first thing we're going to do we'll, we'll handle our motion in the x direction and the reason i created that direction variable is it's going to tell us whether we need to be bouncing left or bouncing right so i'll just say if it's positive and we're gonna kind of use it as a speed parameter as well, so that's why I'm just checking if it's positive. I'm not checking if it's one per se. Um, but so if it's positive, we then need to check that our circle has not gone past the right boundary. So um, that's gonna be if the circle is less than 570, right? Because the screen window is 600 pixels wide and then our circle has a radius of 30 pixels. So when the center of the circle, which circle X is looking at, is within 30 pixels of the right edge, then it's time to stop it. But so if it's less than 570, we can just go ahead and add our circle X direction variable to the position of circle X. But then otherwise, so now we're saying it has gone far enough to the right that it needs to shift directions. So we're going to then um, multiply the circle X by minus one, the direction variable. And what we're doing there is we're saying, okay, go all the way until you hit one extremity to the right. And at that point, update and move back to the left. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this just uh, so we can take a look at it. Built-in function has no attribute tick. What have I done? to my, what have I done to my timer? Oh, silly. Just need a few parentheses sometimes. So what we're gonna see here, it should move to the right and, okay, so we reversed the direction, but now we haven't put the code in yet, handling while it moves to the left and bounces back. So if we look at our update ball position function, all we're doing is saying, well, while the direction is positive, go to the right until you hit the right extremity. So what we need in next is gonna be our else condition. So this will be L if circle direction is negative. And I'm doing this because if we ever wanna stop the ball completely like in a game over scenario, that would be a time to make direction equal to zero. And then it won't move left and it won't move right. And this time we're saying, well, it's moving backwards. We want to check if it's greater than 30 now. So it hasn't hit the left extremity. And again, we can keep the rest of this in place, the adding the direction and then multiplying times one. Um, and actually one thing I'm going to do just for these uh, examples is I'm going to increase this up to five. So the ball should move quite a bit faster now. Um, because what we just said is per second move five pixels. So this might look a little goofy on the recording. I think the recording takes um, images at 20 frames per second. Uh, it looks pretty smooth on my machine. And if you are running it, um, following along on yours, it should look pretty good at 60 FPS too. It's just the screen capture software. Um, probably has it jumping around a little bit. But the ball is bouncing back and forth uniformly left to right. So the next thing to do will be basically add this exact same code and we want to do it in the y direction this time so let's go ahead and just copy in all the exact same code and starting here just change all your x's to y's and since we made the screen the same size in the left and the right and our object is uniform we don't have to change the 30 or the 570 we can just keep those exactly as is and uh, so I'll go ahead and run this and what you'll see is actually going to be um, kind of boring because it's going to shoot straight to the corner and then straight back up to the corner um, because it's a, it's, a rect it's a square screen, it's moving to the left and to the right at the same speed and it starts in the middle. 
Um, but the reason I made these two variables is you now have control of the speed the ball moves in the X direction and the Y direction independently from one another. So I can move it in the Y direction twice as fast as in the X direction and then we actually start getting some motion that's a little more satisfying. Um, and so that's just the basics of how to get an object um, displaying on the screen and updating, uh, bouncing off of your extremities. And what we'll do in the next couple videos is we'll start adding in like a scoring system and we can create a player to avoid the ball and we'll eventually add collision saying you've lost once the um, ball has hit you. So uh, keep an eye out for future tutorials coming. But for now, we've created an object on the screen and we handle collision with the extremities of the screen. And um, that's pretty cool. So thanks for checking this video out. If you have any questions about what you saw here or um, suggestions for ways this could have been cleaner code, go ahead and uh, let me know in the comments. And if you found this or anything on the channel useful, um, feel free to leave a like and a subscribe on the channel. That really helps me out a lot. And uh, as always, good luck with your code and thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye.